Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today I'm going to show you why I think the AK-101 is one of the ultimate mid-game weapons for 12-12-30. Recently we've had a series of 5.56 buffs on both weapons and ammo which included the AK-101 as the primary 5.56 AK in Tarkov alongside the shorter AK-102. Now it has 72 recoil out of the box which is honestly getting really good and this weapon effectively combines NATO 5.56 ammo and suppressors with relatively cheap AK style modding on the rest of the gun which gives us tons of options. You can find the 101 on Mechanic 2 and on the flea market sometimes it's very slightly cheaper, you can find a 100% one for about 40k, maybe a little bit less but they're quite popular weapons so usually that's not the case. We go and have a look at editing the preset, as you can see to begin with they're now 72 which I said is really really nice. Firstly we're going to look at the new best in slot version which gets down to 37 recoil which is quite impressive really. So on the muzzles we're going to use the CNC Warrior adapter and this is the one that allows us access to the regular 556 suppressors which is really cool and gives us all these options which is awesome. Then we're going to pick the Silent Succo combo as we usually do because this is the best in slot for 556. And swapping over to the handguards we'll replace the entire gas block section with the Troy FLR the QARS rail and then the RK2. We'll normally swap this one out for doing actual builds but just for the time being we want to see what the minimum recoil is. Get rid of the rear iron sight, pop on a bastion cover for that minus 1% recoil reduction. In terms of the magazines we can change this over to the C10, this just gives one extra ergonomics. Pistol grips, the best in slot is the AGS which gives another 8 over the stock default which is pretty cool. And then here we're going to add the PT74M lock and on top of that the PT3. This is basically the same as the PRS except it gives way more ergonomics. Then we can change the charging handle over to the knurled charging handle and add that on which is kind of cool and that gets us to 44 ergonomics and 37 vertical recoil which is a bit of a monster. Now because of this PT3 section you might notice that the ergonomics is really high for a best in slot suppressed weapon. This is honestly really really good and it's one of the great things about the AKs because they benefit from these stocks which have really really high ergonomics. If you go and look at the PRS Gen 3 it has really terrible ergo stats whereas the PT3 is kind of good on both. I do want to make a quick note before we move on because this technically isn't the lowest recoil that you can get on the whole gun. We replace back to the ordinary dust covers and we lose our 1% recoil here. This one does have the dovetail mount so you can if you really 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 want to or you want to make a mean build you can go for the NSPU site here and get this thing down to 32. And yeah it is possible to put a canted on, you could put a canted sight on here if you feel that you really want to go down that route and then you can kind of look through that and take advantage of the 32 recoil or do it on point fire or something but anyway I just wanted to note that there because it is an option not one that I recommend but it is an option. Okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to reset this because it's easier just to start with a fresh one. We're going to begin with the level 2 traders version because that's where most people are right now and it's kind of interesting to build with those restrictions in place. One issue with the 101 early is that on muzzles they are a little bit of a problem. So the PWS CQB is Skier 3 and the SRVV and the RRD 4C are both Mechanic 3 which is actually not really that useful for us right now. There is a trick to get one of the PWS muzzles early which is to look for an SAG carbine with the muzzle and then sell back the whole gun to mechanic and if you do this sometimes you can even do it for free or make money which is quite amazing. Of the other choices the Rota 43 suppressor is pretty expensive on the flea market like 45k so I don't think it's necessarily that good a choice and you've got the CNC warrior but this is mechanic 3 as well and that's the one that we used on the best build so at the moment we don't really have much choice outside of using the hybrid 46 which is a mechanic 2 barter now this usually looks very expensive on the flea market we just go to look at fine parts like 72k but as I said there's a barter and mechanic 2 and this one is for four sticks of ram so if you can get these ram sticks nice and cheap well, this is pretty good for about like 6k so that's actually only 24,000 that's actually very 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 cost effective usually they're about seven to eight but that's a really really cheap one so basically that's getting the hybrid 46 suppressor for 24,000 and this is the one that I would recommend if you're at level two and wanting to build this gun the hybrid's not the best on recoil out of all of the suppressors but it is actually pretty decent on ergonomics so you know you get something for that at least and we're just going to whip through the rest of the gun all of this stuff just comes at level two traders so we're going to keep the regular gas tube and on the handguard we're going to use the RS47 which comes from Peacekeeper. In terms of vertical foregrips we don't really have a lot of choice. The only one that gives you minus two at level two traders is the RK4 so we're going to use that. On the side we'll go and add a laser. We'll just add the cheap one TBL because that gives us some short range oomph 
Then in terms of the pistol grip, there's a new grip, the Tango Down, which kind of came with the RD, the new AK style weapon. And that one is over here. And this black version you can get at Skier 2. And this is as good as like the US Palm and some of the others. And there's a nice little upgrade on the saw grip. And it's also really not that expensive, but you can get it at Skier 2, which is really, really cool. Although the PT3 and the other stocks of the AK are good, the butt pad with the basic stock is really, really powerful. Honestly, it's one of the best stocks you can get. And for the price, it's very, very difficult to get any better than that. It's very compelling. Then we're going to go to the Bastion Rail and add this on as usual. And then in terms of optics, like it's really up to you. But one thing that I find quite cost effective, it's a scope that really divides people using the compact mount sights, this one compact mount adapter, you can then apply the prism two and a half times. And I think this combined with a laser is actually pretty decent. And these are only 20,000 from Skier. So they're one of the more cost effective optics that you can get relatively early on. And that brings our gun to 45 ergonomics and 61 vertical recoil, which honestly isn't bad, especially for a suppressed weapon like this is pretty good. So this is okay, but as we've strictly kept to level two traders, you could make a strong argument that the MDR is cheaper and about the same effectiveness. It's about 15K more for the base gun, usually about 55,000 on the flea, but we only have to spend 30K for the same suppressor, 99K on mods, and including the gun, it comes to about 130 total and it has great ergo. So it's a little bit cheaper and maybe you get slightly faster ADS speed than this one that we built. But the thing about the MDR is that because it has limited modding potential on it, once you've reached the recoil limit of the gun, there's not really much else you can do to make it any better, which is where I think using a few tricks on the 101, we can actually improve this build and make it better than the MDR for recoil. But the first one is we were speaking before about the CNC Warrior. Now this is Mechanic 3, which means you don't have access to it straight away. But if you go and look at it on the flea market, usually it's actually pretty much the same price as Mechanic. It's very, very cheap. It's only really used on this one gun in particular. So people tend to sell it down at this very, very cheap level. So grabbing one of these, we can actually use that from the flea. And then we unlock all of these muzzle devices, which is really cool. Now there's two in here that I wanted to flag. The SF3P. Oh, this combination this one comes from mechanic 2 so you can get access to that straight away and the combo that you want to put with this is the rc2 this can be sometimes quite cheap it really depends on the flea market at the time so you just have to have a look but this is 30k and actually pretty decent it's not bad so you can see already now we've got our recoil down to 50. the other alternative to this is the one that you normally see the nt4 this is the qdc 556 muzzle and then on top of that you've got the nt4 either the black or the fde we can probably do a linked search and just see which one is the cheapest if you go through functional muzzle devices suppressors you can see there it's the black version right now which is 27k so that's pretty good this one has got the same recoil as the surefire that we looked at a second ago except you get four less ergonomics so the recoil is the same at 50 but we've got 40 rather than 44 ergonomics the next optimization, we've looked at this before, if we go to find parts, we can get a better handguard than the RS-47 often, most of the time, not always, just, just often. So we linked search the gas tube, we can go into handguards themselves, and we can go and scroll down and see what is on offer. Now I did this earlier, what the deal is, is there's a couple of these, right, these MOE AKM handguards, and there's lots of different colours, and so they've all got separate listings, which makes them really annoying to keep track of, basically. But this one here, the AK Olive one, at the moment, is the cheapest, and Stealth Grey is a little bit more if you wanted to go for that which is pretty cool. So what I would advise is going and buying any of these, like whichever one you want to do. We lo were looking at the RS-47 before, but you can see that's $120. It's actually more expensive than these. So if you wanted to go and get like a Stealth Grey one, for example, you just buy this. And then we go back to our modding screen. And what we do is we replace this with the Stealth Grey one, because this will work when we do assemble. Add this on here. And then all we need to do is we need to get an M-Lock 4.1 rail, which comes from Mechanic 2, or there's a barter at Mechanic 1 if you don't have that, but I'm, I'm sure you probably will. And then in terms of the foregrips, we just put back on our RK4 from Skier. And so then that takes us back up a little bit more ergonomics. You basically get four more ergo pretty much for free because this is cheaper than the one we had on before. And you're just using the flea market and utilizing that to optimize this gun and get more stats than you would have otherwise. Obviously, we'll want to stick back on our laser as well. There's a new mount here called the M-Lock Cantilever Mount. And this actually gives you one extra ergonomics and basically costs the same. So we'll apply that and then we'll apply the TBL, which takes one ergo off. So we actually don't lose anything for putting that on the weapon. So now we're at 44 and 50 recoil. And, and yeah, this is this is pretty good. As I said before, we can make this better by using the SF3P instead, as long as the RC2 is playing ball. And that gets you to 48 and 50, which is kind of an optimized version. I think this is pretty cool. This is, this is a good build. This is actually a decent build. 
Now, moving up to level three traders gives you a few more options. There's one extra suppressor that you now really can access that doesn't end up costing the end of the earth. We're still going through the CNC Warrior. This time, we're going to look at the Thunder Beast, which is basically the third best suppressor that you can get for this caliber. Now, the reason why this one works out is because there's another barter for this one too. So if we exclude it, the 45K on the flea market, but it's one cap and two of these other kind of caps. So this is the Tegilla cap, the boss cap. So there's 18k right now, which is kind of expensive, but sometimes they go a bit cheaper than that. And the other caps are going down at 11k there. So that's 22k, 30k, 40k. So it's does not really making sense right now, but it's a good one to just keep an eye out for. It's still cheaper than on the flea market, but sometimes these can be trading down, especially the boss cap, when the boss cap is kind of low, that's when you should be looking out for it. And you can get these down at about 35, 36k if you're kind of timing it and looking it out at the right time and then a bit lucky with your flea market. The next part that you get access to at level three traders is with mechanic three and this opens up the vdm cs gas tube which is interesting because it allows you to apply a handguard that you can't use otherwise which is the krebs now this thing fluctuates like crazy on the flea market sometimes it's cheap sometimes it's not so you really just have to look out for it and what we're going to do on this is we're going to add a rail and we're going to add the rvg black from peacekeeper because this is really the best bang for buck but if we go and have a look at the krebs right now it's at 18k which is not that much i've seen them all the way down to about 11 i've seen them all the way up here at like 60 odds so you just have to look out for it at the time but the beauty of the krebs is it's got a minus three percent recoil on it which is really really cool and plus 11 ergonomics which makes it really good it's such such a good one if you can get it under about 15k it's like a complete no-brainer handguard in my opinion and then to be honest the rest of the gun we're just going to keep it as is we just we can add one of these nc stars back on on the side but you can really just use whatever scope combination you want. The butt pad, I don't think it's really worth changing over to the PT3. Just leave the stock with the butt pad on here. And honestly, the, the rest of the weapon is fine. Like keep the same pistol grip, it's all good. You could change over to something else. I have been utilizing and using a little bit this new three times scope, which I actually think is kind of cool. The Trihawk Swamp Fox is pretty neat. And this has got really nice sight picture. I think this is really, really cool. So combining this with either a laser or a canted, if you if you enjoy canted and you're a canted user, I'm more of a laser guy, but tried a little bit of canted and it can kind of work. But this, this build I, has been working for me. It's been really, really nice, actually. I've been enjoying this a lot. 44 vertical recoil is not a lot for an AK. We go and have a look at how much all of this might actually cost. Let's go through this. Usually you just want to build your guns with the assemble, but we're going to go find parts just to make sure that we include everything in here. So we don't need the stock and we don't need the mag because we get those with the weapon. We bought pretty much everything else in this list. And then we're going to get rid of this for the time being. And we'll get rid of the Thunder Beast for the moment as well. So it's basically 110k for all of the mods and the gun which is not really that bad. And then your choice of optics, so 35,000 is kind of expensive. If you went for the prism, then that would be 20 instead. So that'd be 130K. And then the suppressor, if you can get that for 30, 40K, you can obviously choose the RC2 or something, just depending on how the flea market is at the time. So we're talking, yeah, in the region of 160, 170K for the whole gun, which is getting on the punchier end, but we're talking level three traders. So this is a bit of a step up. Talking about that, there is one other option because now that we have Mechanic 3, instead of using the CNC Warrior, we can use the RRD instead. You lose three recoil points versus the Thunder Beast, and obviously we're not suppressed anymore. But having 68 ergonomics is really insane. Like if you want to boost this up totally, you can go for the PT Lock and the PT3, but it's probably not really worth it, especially on this one. You might consider it for the suppressed version because that gives you a bit more ergo. But on the unsuppressed version, having 68 ergonomics is absolutely insane. I was using this the other day with a Canted, and it's just, it flies. It's like, it's so feather, feather light in your hands, it feels when your PMC is using it. So you can look through the scope super quickly and you can use the canted scope really, really fast as well. This is really cool because you don't really get the option to go unsuppressed with 5.56 very often because the other weapons don't really have a very good option for not having a suppressor on because usually they're reliant on the combos. So the RRD is a really nice thing for the AK and the 101 being 5.56 basically gives you an option that doesn't really exist elsewhere in the 5.56 world. So as with all 5.56 weapons, they aren't really worth using until you have M856A1 ammo unlocked. There is a massive step up between M855 and 56A1, and you have to complete some of Peacekeeper's quests first to get the Cult Part 1, which unlocks it from him. You could make it in the hideout at Workbench 2, but it's relatively expensive at around 460 rubles per round, and when you take into account opportunity cost, it's more like 710 rubles per round instead. Don't let that stop you though, if you think it's worth it and you want to use them slightly earlier, then go for it. We spoke about the MDR earlier and I think the 101 sits in a really good place across the 556 category as the MDR can only go so far on recoil due to its bullpup configuration which means that it doesn't have a replaceable stock and the stats of the stock are rolled into the base recoil of the weapon. So attachments do less for this gun as you can't get to the levels of recoil possible on the 101. 
The Scar L does have nice recoil, but the gun is a bit clumsy and often has low ergonomics when suppressed, as we can't do much to that one either. The 101 is a great in-between, and we have such a variety of builds that you can tailor exactly what you want out of it. For the others, the G36, the M4 and the HK are hurt by their fast fire rate too much to make them decent for the mid-game, as the initial spray is very high and only really makes sense when building these out with best-in-slot attachments. The one final point on the 101 which is really good is it has such high muzzle velocity. Have a look at this quick clip here and see how quickly the scab dies after I fired the gun. Oh, the AK-101, it's so good! Next up, we'll be diving into a raid with the cheaper 101 build that worked out really nicely. Now in here a lot of the time, you just get like pinned down. Hope, he's like... Ah. Kind of encounters the reason why I love this map of like random people lying down by on the floor but next to ramps and stuff. It's good. <sighs> oh god, what's the best way to go about this now? I don't want to walk through the center. I feel like I probably want to walk through. Yeah, even though this is like a really long way around. Did I get seen by another one? Uh, there's something about the way that the AK-101 feels to me that I just enjoy. Something about it I just like. It's like a combination of like the ergonomics, the recoil on it, just how it, like the handling feels and stuff. There's just something about this gun that I just like. What the heck? We know there's kind of someone in the area. Kind of, because we heard them getting shot. Unless it was, a, it could have been a Steam Audio bug. Then we don't really know what the distance is, do we? I'm trying to come into this this side. I just think this is better than trying to go around that ramp. That ramp is just a dead death zone. I think I feel like the the old killer, the fact that killer used to spawn there, kind of made the ramp into kind of a thing of its own. You take away killer, but the the precedent is still there. You know, it's like. Here lieth the killer spawn zone. Enter here, all ye who dare risk their untimely death. Number of people I've engaged down here. I think that's someone in the store, so. Really don't know what was going on there. Come on, you stupid thing. All right. Was that PMC? Didn't sound like a scav. I'm pretty sure it was, yeah. <laughs> because I want outside, I actually think it's better. That ain't good. I got blacked head. I know. An extract for me, dog. Emma Com. On the wrong side. That could work. But if I if I just get shot by a scav, it's gonna be so annoying. Did I say Emicom? Yeah, I did, didn't I? We can go this way. Could also no backpack. I could. I could. Content suggestion. Have to re-examine random items of the game and if your head gets black to simulate head trauma.
don't know what that means. I have a terrible position here. Is he dead? Any nades? I have one. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. What a spray. Have anything on him or was he just... Oh, he did have a few bits. Okay. A few things. A few things. <laughs> Nothing to worry about here. It was all good. Breaks, bleeds. We're really bashed, aren't we? Let me up. Here we go. I'm not sure anymore. I'm not sure now. Wait, hold up. What happens here? If 545 is more of your thing, then do take a look at this build for the RPK that can get you a very nice weapon for 75k or less using efficient barters. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids. Wow. <laughs>